Hello, welcome to ResoCoder. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to integrate saved games by using Google Play Games Services plugin in Unity. Be sure to check out the previous tutorial about achievements and leaderboards, where I also explain how to install Google Play Games Services plugin and also how to set up your game in the developer console. In this tutorial, we're gonna be saving just one simple variable, player's high score, so that the code is short and uncluttered. You can obviously save anything you want to the cloud. First up, we need to go to our developer console and enable saved games over there. So just go to developer console, open up your game under game services tab and your game and now click on saved games so that they are gonna be on. Now we're gonna create a simple short script cloud variables which is simply gonna hold all the variables which we wanna save to the cloud. In this tutorial as I've said earlier we're gonna be saving only one simple variable high score. So create a script C sharp script and name it cloud variables and the only thing that we're gonna have here in this tutorial is gonna be public static int high score, which is gonna be a property. And this property is gonna have public getter and also public setter. And that's it for this script. We're gonna be changing the value of this high score variable whenever a player scores more points than ever before. Firstly, however, let's write a code that is gonna handle the actual saving. We're gonna be saving to the cloud and also locally, should there be no connection or if just the player doesn't wanna sign in to Google Play Games. We're gonna add the cloud saving code to the Play Games script we've already written in the previous tutorial, so check it out if you haven't already. First up, we need to add two using statements, and that is using Google Play Games basic API dot saved game. We also need to be using system.text because we're gonna be encoding to and from byte arrays. Inside our play games script class, we're gonna create an instance which should be normally implemented as a singleton instance, but because we aren't gonna be switching between multiple scenes in this tutorial, it doesn't need to be implemented as a classic singleton. Tutorial on singletons is coming, so subscribe if you don't wanna miss it. So public static play games script instance and this is gonna be a property with public getter and private setter. Now we need to create a constant string save name which is gonna hold the name of our saves. So constant string save name and we're gonna set this to tutorial. We also need to have a boolean is saving which is gonna be telling us if we are saving data or if we are loading data. So bool is saving. We also need to have a boolean is cloud data loaded, which I'm gonna explain in a little while. Once we have that, we can set instance to this. Now we can set our local backup data. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna be using player prefs for simplicity. So if player prefs doesn't already have a key save name, so if not player prefs dot has key, save name, then we wanna set string at the key of save name and initialize it to zero. So player prefs dot set string, key is save name, and the value is zero as a string. We could obviously be using int here because our cloud variable high score is int, but using strings is more versatile in that basically everything in C sharp can be represented as a string. And when you want to save some more complex data, you're gonna need to be saving it as a string, whether you like it or not. We also want to have a player pref called is first time, which is gonna be an int and it's gonna tell us if the player has already played our game on this device ever before, this variable is going to be saved only locally. So if not player prefs dot has key is first time, we want to set this player pref to one. So player prefs dot set int and we could be using set boolean, but unfortunately player prefs doesn't have anything like that. And the key is is first time and the value is gonna be one 
which means true. Then we want to enable saved games. So after this builder and before the build, we're going to add enable saved games to our play games client configuration. And we can also tidy this up a bit by pressing enter. Let's write some methods which are going to convert our game data to string and also from string. I'm going to create a region and call it saved games. And inside we want to have a method which is going to return string and it's going to be private. And we're going to call it game data to string. So string game data to string, which is obviously just going to be making a string out of our game data. And we want to simply return our high score converted to string. And our high score is located in cloud variables. And high score is a static property. So we can just get it directly from the class cloud variables. So dot high score dot to string. Then we want to have a method string to game data, which is going to accept cloud data string and also local data string. And this method is going to select if we should prefer to use cloud data or local data. In our example, this is pretty simple. The high score with greater value should obviously get selected because when a high score has greater value, it means that the player has played the game longer. So void string to game data. This is going to accept two strings, cloud data and local data. I should also add that this method is going to be executed only when the user is successfully signed in to Google Play Games. If he couldn't get logged in or if he doesn't want to get logged in, we're going to create another overload of this method, which is going to accept only local data. So inside we want to check if it is the first time that the player is playing our game on this device. So if player prefs get in with the key of is first time equals one. And if it is true that the player is playing for the first time on this device, we want to set this player pref to be false because obviously it's no longer true. So player prefs set in is first time to zero. And because this is the first time that the player has logged in on this device, if the player has already played our game on another device and he was using Google Play games, cloud data is gonna be more up to date for sure. But we are actually gonna check it just to be 100% sure that the cloud data is more up to date than local data. And by being more up to date, as I've explained earlier, we're just gonna check if the high score in cloud data is greater than the high score contained in local data. So if int dot parse and we want to parse cloud data and if this int is greater than int dot parse local data, then we can be 100% sure that the cloud data is more up to date. And so if that is true, we want to set the local save to be equal to the cloud save. So player prefs dot set string at the key of save name and we want it to be equal to cloud data. If it's not the first time that the player has played the game on this device, we want to compare if local data is more up to date than cloud data. So else if int dot parse local data is greater than int dot parse cloud data, and if that is true, we want to update the cloud save. So first we're going to set our cloud variable high score to be equal to local save, which is more up to date. So cloud variables dot high score equals int dot parse local data. We also want to send the more up to date high score to leaderboard just to be sure that it gets to the leaderboard because in the previous session, the player was not locked into Google Play Games services. That way we cannot be sure that the score actually got into the leaderboards. So we are going to do it now. We're going to call a method that we've created in the previous tutorial, which is add score to leaderboard. So really check out the previous tutorial to find out how all of this works. So add score to leaderboard. The leaderboard that we are adding this score to is 
GPGS IDs dot leaderboard leaderboard and the score is our cloud variables dot high score which we've just updated on this line. Then we want to set our boolean variable is cloud data loaded which we've created just here. We want to set this to be equal to true because it's actually loaded. We've loaded the cloud data already but we've compared it with local data and we've decided that the local data is more up to date. So is cloud data loaded equals true. Then we want to call a method which we have not yet created but we are going to create it in just a little bit and the name of the method is save data and it's not going to accept any arguments. And then we want to return from this method because there is nothing more to do here. And if it's not the first time, and if also local data is not more up to date than cloud data, cloud safe and local safe are actually identical. So we can choose either one, but because we can choose only one of them in this tutorial, I'm going to simply choose cloud data. So cloud variables dot high score is going to be equal to int dot parse cloud data and we also want to set is cloud data loaded to true and that's it for this method. As I've said this method this overload is going to be called only when the player successfully logs in to Google Play Games. If he doesn't get signed in because he for example doesn't want to we're gonna need to be calling another method which is going to be called the same but it's going to have different signature and such a method is called an overload. So this is also going to be void string to game data and this is going to accept only local data. So string local data and inside it's going to be much simpler than above here because we have only local data in this method so we do not have to compare it with the cloud data so we can just set the cloud variables high score to be equal to local data. So cloud variables dot high score equals int dot parse local data and that's it. Now we're gonna create a method called load data. It's gonna be public void and it's not gonna accept any arguments. And here we want to check if the local user is signed in to Google Play Games. So if social dot local user dot authenticated, which is a property. And if he is authenticated, we want to set is saving to false because we actually want to load data. So obviously is saving must be false. And now we actually want to use the Google Play Games services plugin to get the data from the cloud. We can do this by casting social.active to Play Games platform. So we want to cast to Play Games platform and we want to cast social.active and we want to get the saved game property. We want to open the saved game with manual conflict resolution which we are going to write in just a little while. So dot open with manual conflict resolution. And this wants a string file name, which is our constant string save name. Then it wants data source source. So data source, we want to read cache or network. Then bool prefetch data on conflict. We want to set this to be true. Then we want to specify a conflict callback because we are actually going to be resolving the conflicts with manual conflict resolution. So we need to supply a method which is going to do that. And the method is going to be called resolve conflict and we're going to create it in just a little while. So resolve conflict. And we also want to supply a callback which is a method which is going to get called when we actually get access to this saved game. And this method is gonna get written in just a bit. And the name of this method is gonna be on saved game opened. So awesome. And if the local user is not authenticated, that means we are not connected to Google Play Games. We just wanna load local data. So else 
we just want to call load local and we are going to create this method load local right now. So below our public void load data, we are going to create private void load local and inside this method we want to call our string to game data overload which accepts only local data which is this so we want to call string to game data and supply local data which is located in player prefs dot get string save name then we want to make a method called save data which we are already calling here in the string to game data this is gonna be public void save data and here we want to check if the cloud data is loaded and if it is not loaded we want to just save to local so that we aren't gonna mess up our cloud save so if not is cloud data loaded then we want to just save local and return and save local is a method that we are gonna write in just a while so save local and then we want to return from this save data method and i've just noticed that i have a typo here not saved data but save data and now we want to check if local user is authenticated which is the same thing as here and we can actually copy this if statement from load data and paste it into our save data method and all we need to change here is this is saving boolean is going to be equal to true because we are saving data and we need to check if cloud data is not loaded before checking if social.local user is authenticated because getting the data from the cloud takes some time and when you don't have an extremely fast internet connection it can take maybe half a minute as well that means that the user can be already authenticated but the cloud data is not yet loaded so if we checked for this if statement before this is cloud data loaded we would be saving to the cloud and we don't want to do that because we could mess up our cloud save as i explained earlier and if local user is not authenticated so else we just want to save local as well and now we're gonna write a method called save local so private void save local and this is gonna be saving only to the player prefs so player prefs dot set string with the key of save name and the string that we want to save we're actually gonna get it from calling game data to string which is a method that we have written earlier in this tutorial now let's get on to the resolve conflict method and the resolve conflict is gonna be private void and this has to accept i conflict resolver we're gonna call this i conflict resolver resolver then it needs to accept i saved game metadata and this saved game metadata is for original data so original and I'm gonna explain what this means in just a while then byte array for original data so byte array original data then it needs to accept I saved game metadata for unmerged metadata it also accepts byte array of unmerged data and now what is actually this original data and unmerged data well in the cloud there are two types of data original and unmerged original is the data that is already present in the cloud and unmerged is the data that was most recently modified and inside this resolve conflict method we want to compare the original data and unmerged data and decide which of these two is more up to date in this tutorial deciding which data is more up to date is pretty simple because whichever data has greater value is more up to date because a high score with greater value is surely more up to date than high score with lesser value here we want to check if the original data byte array is null and if it is we want to choose on the merge data we can do this by calling resolver which is this i conflict resolver so resolver 
dot choose metadata and we want to choose unmerged because original data is null and this choose metadata method accepts i saved game metadata so we need to pass in just this unmerged and not the byte array unmerged data then we also want to check if unmerged data is null and then we want to choose original data if neither of the original data or unmerged data is null then we want to compare them and choose whichever has the higher value so else and because we have original data and unmerged data passed into this method as byte arrays we need to convert them to string and that's why we have this using system.text statement in this play games script so we want to compare original data and unmerged data so first we are going to create a string original string and we are going to get string from this original data byte array by calling encoding ascii and we want to use ascii here because it actually occupies less space only one byte as opposed to unicode which can occupy much more and because we are actually going to be saving only numbers ascii is more than enough for our purposes so encoding dot ascii dot get string and we want to get string from a byte array original data and we want to do the same for unmerged data so just change original string to unmerged string and we want to get unmerged data then we want to parse these strings into integers integer original num equals in dot parse original string pretty straightforward and we want to do the same for unmerged string awesome and now we actually want to start finally resolving so if original num is greater than unmerged num so that means if original score is greater than the unmerged score we want to choose original metadata by calling resolver.choose metadata and passing original into this method and then we want to return from resolve conflict method then else if unmerged num is greater than original num we want to choose unmerged and also return from this method and if return didn't get called from these two if statements original and unmerged saves are identical so we can choose either one but because we can choose only one of them in this tutorial i'm gonna keep original so resolver dot choose metadata original awesome that's it for resolve conflict method now we are gonna write on saved game opened method which we are calling from load data and also save data here so private void on saved game opened this is gonna accept saved game request status we're gonna call it status and also i saved game metadata which we are gonna call game and inside we want to check if status is saved game request status dot success because this is an enum so if status equals saved game request status dot success and if so we want to check if we are saving so we are going to use our boolean that we've created at the beginning of this tutorial so if not is saving which means we are loading we want to call load game which is a method we are gonna write in just a second and we want to pass game which is i saved game metadata into this load game method and else which means if we are saving we want to call save game which is a method that we are going to write in just a while as well and we also want to pass game into this method and if something had gone wrong so status is not success we want to do everything locally so else if not is saving we want to call load local which is a method that we have already written in this tutorial and else we want to call save local now let's actually write this load game method this is going to be private void load game and it's going to accept i saved game metadata game and inside 
we want to cast social.active to play games platform. And from it, we want to get saved game and we want to read binary data. In this method, we have to pass I saved game metadata, which is passed into this load game method. And the name of it is game. And we also want to supply a method, which is going to get called when read binary data finishes. And we are going to write that method in just a bit. It's going to be called on saved game data read. Cool. Now let's write a method save game, which we are using here in on saved game opened. So private void save game. It's also going to accept I saved game metadata game. We want to create a string which we are going to be saving. So string, string to save. And this is going to be equal to game data to string. Whenever we are saving to the cloud, we also want to save locally. By saving locally in this tutorial, I mean setting a string inside player prefs. So player prefs dot set string at the key of save name, which is our constant string. And the value is string to save. Then we want to convert this string to save to an byte array, which is done similarly as converting a byte array to a string as we've done in the resolve conflict method. So we want to create a byte array, call it data to save, and it's going to be equal to encoding dot ASCII dot get bytes. And we want to get bytes from string to save. Then we need to create saved game metadata update, although that's not necessary for this tutorial, but it needs to be created because it's actually going to get passed to a method we are going to be calling in just a bit. So saved game metadata update, we're going to call it update and it's going to be equal to new save game metadata update dot builder dot built. And now we want to upload data to the cloud. So we are again going to cast social dot active to play games platform. And from this, we want to get saved game and we want to commit update to this saved game. So commit update, we want to supply I saved game metadata, which is passed into this method save game. So just game, then update for metadata, which is our update, which we've just created, we need to supply byte array of updated binary data, which is data to save, and also a callback, which is going to get called when commit update method finishes. And the callback is going to be a method which we are going to create in just a little while. And it's going to be called on saved game data written. And now we have almost everything done. All we need to write is on saved game data read and on saved game data written. And we are actually finished with this play games script. So first up, we're going to write private void on saved game data read. And inside here, we want to have parameters of saved game request status. We're going to call it status. And we also want to have byte array of saved data. This is the byte array containing data, which we actually want to assign to our cloud variable high score. So inside this method, we want to check if everything was successful. So if status is equal to saved game request status dot success. And if it is equal to success, we want to create a string cloud data string, which we are gonna get from our saved data byte array, which is passed into this method by calling encoding dot ASCII dot get string from saved data byte array. And we also want to create a string local data string because we are going to be calling our method string to game data, which is right here, which accepts string cloud data and local data. And as you may remember, this string to game data method is going to compare cloud data and local data and decide which one is more up to date. So back into our unsaved game data read method, we want to create string local data string, and it's going to be equal to player prefs dot get string with the key of save name. And then we want to call string to game data with cloud data string and local data string. And hey, it's me and I'm coming from the future. 
I've realized that I have made a mistake in this unsaved game data read method. We actually need to check if this saved data byte array has length of zero. And this is gonna happen when the user has not played our game ever before. So if the length of this array is zero, we also wanna set our cloud data string to be equal to zero. And if a player has played our game before, that means save data dot length is not zero. We can assign cloud data string whatever is in the saved data byte array, obviously encoded to a string using encoding dot ASCII dot get string. Otherwise, you're gonna get nasty errors. Now, all that's left to write in this play game script is this unsaved game data written method in which we aren't gonna do anything in this tutorial because it's not necessary. We just need to have it here so that we can pass it as a callback to comet update. So private void unsaved game data written and this accepts also saved game request status status and it doesn't accept byte array of saved data because in this method we aren't gonna get any data we are actually writing data, so byte array wouldn't even make sense here. But we get I saved game metadata, and we're gonna call it game. And here you can check for things. So, for example, if status is gonna be successful, you can print out to debug.log, for example, that uh, cloud save was successful. And if it's not successful, you can write that there is some kind of an error, but we aren't gonna get into this in this tutorial. So yeah, play game script is done. That's amazing. Let's go back to Unity. And as you can see, I've already added a text field, which is gonna display the value of high score, which is this green text field here. So now let's add a method for updating this text in the UI script which we created in the previous tutorial. So let's open UI script here and add a method. The method is gonna be public void update high score text. And inside we wanna update our high score text, but we first need to add it into our script. So we again write serialize field private text high score text. And now we can go back to our method for updating this text and we are gonna write high score text dot text property and we wanna set it to cloud variables dot high score and we also wanna convert it to string. So that's all for the UI script. And now all there's left to do is to add custom logic for changing the value of high score and for initiating saving whenever the value of high score changes. We're gonna do that in manager script, which was also made in the previous tutorial. So we're gonna open manager script, and in the start method, we wanna update the high score text. So we are gonna call UI script dot instance of the UI script, and we wanna update high score text. Then inside restart game, after adding score to leaderboard, we want to check if the counter variable is greater than cloud variables dot high score. And if it is, we want to set high score to the current value of counter. We want to call a method on our play game script to initiate the saving of data. So play game script instance dot save data. And we also want to update high score text with the current value of high score which was updated in this line. So UI script dot instance dot update high score text. And when I've said that we are done with play game script for this tutorial, I was actually lying because I have forgotten that we need to load the data whenever the start method is running. But in the start method, we wanna load local data so that the user has some kind of data to work with even though he's not connected to the internet, or even if he is connected to the internet, it's gonna take a while to get all of the data from the cloud and actually parse it and resolve conflicts and do all kind of that stuff. So 
first up we need to call simple load local which is gonna load only local data so load local and then we are signing in and in this method sign in we call social.localuser.authenticate and we supply a callback as a lambda and what we need to write inside this lambda is load data which is actually gonna load data from the cloud not only from the local player prefs so now that's really it for scripting all there's left to do is drag high score text inside our ui script on our manager game object and now we can actually test this inside unity editor so we are gonna press on play and we can click on get point so one two restart awesome you see that we have high score of two we press one we press on restart high score doesn't change we stop playing we start playing and there's two so awesome everything works now let's set it to five stop playing start playing and everything works but that's only using local data so we are only saving to player preps because we are inside unity editor what we need to actually test is if cloud saving is working for that to happen we need to build an apk so make sure you are switched to android and now go to player settings set up key store set up the bundle identifier and version and all of that good stuff so now let's click on build save so let's test our game we're gonna open it inside an emulator and as you can see i already have one point because i have tested it before and when we press on get point we have one two and three we press on restart and the high score changes to three and when we close the game and open it up again we should have high score of three yes we do that's amazing but uh, this would be possible even without cloud saving the main advantage of saving to the cloud is even when a user wants to play on another device or for example if he uninstalls the game or clears the data of the game we can still get the data the high score from the cloud so if we close the game and clear its data all right and if we then start it you see that we have zero but now it actually gets loaded from the cloud and it's gonna get assigned to player prefs and when we close it and open it up again we are gonna have three as our high score and as you can see there it is we have erased all the data but we have pulled our high score from the cloud and now we have it on our device which is totally cool i encourage you to take a look at the code which was written in this tutorial you can get it from resocoder or by clicking on the link in the description the code is gonna be fully commented so you will be able to review it and understand it at your own pace I hope that you've learned something new from this tutorial, if you did give this video a like, if you know about someone who would benefit from this tutorial, then definitely share it, and subscribe to this channel to get notified about new tutorials, if you have any suggestions for me, please leave a comment down below, and see you in the next video!